Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have some farmhouse thrift flip style DIYs to share with you and I'm really excited about them. I love all three of these projects so much and I'm really excited to share them with you. I've had this table sitting out in my garage for months now and I thought I was gonna do something with it and then I just didn't have a plan. The other day I was out there looking through what kind of decor I had and I was like, I have a great idea for this. So I asked my husband, I'm like, can you remove the top of this table for me? So he unscrewed the legs and, you know, used his magic to take off all the pieces. So I was just left with the top of this table. Next, I painted the table with two coats of white paint by Waverly. I wanted this to be very farmhouse and very distressed. So what I did was I actually did two different kinds of distressing. I did wet distressing where I just get a damp rag and I pull off the paint. And this is a really easy technique to use. Just kind of rub at the paint until it comes off and it gives you the look that you want. And I also sometimes use a sanding block and I'll just pull the paint off that way. So either way works. So you're probably wondering what it is I'm making. Well, I decided I wanted this tabletop to be a clock. So I found a stencil that was like the perfect size. I just measured my table and I found a stencil that was pretty much the same size of this on Amazon, link it all below. You could make your stencil if you wanted to, but it was just kind of easier for me to order it, but you could totally make this yourself. So to attach my stencil, all I'm gonna do is lay it out. I found the center, so I knew where the center point should be on my table. And I just used some painter's tape and taped it at the top. Now this stencil has a top layer and then it also has a bottom layer. So I pulled off that bottom layer and it was on there pretty good. So it kind of took me a while to get that bottom layer out. Then I just kind of lightly put the stencil down without smoothing it, making sure I had my center point lined up. Once I did that, then I just smoothed the stencil down like you would if you were using a piece you know, from Cricut or anything. Once you get it all smoothed down, then you can remove that top piece. Can you guys believe how perfect this stencil fits this table? Like I just thought it was awesome. The next step was I had my husband just drill a hole into the center of the table so that I could fit my clock kit in there. You can pick up clock kits off of Amazon. I grabbed this one and all you do is put a clock piece in the back and then you can follow the directions to put on your hour and minute hand. This was so easy to put together. Once you put your battery in, it starts to run. And then I decided to hang this up in my front room right next to my girl's piano. And I think it looks so great for a table that was just sitting out there that I had no idea what I was gonna do with. And now I have this awesome clock. You guys know I get stencils from Stencil Revolution all the time. Well, I had this one market stencil and it was huge. Like I didn't realize it was gonna be this big. And of course I couldn't find any wood in my garage for this sign 
didn't want to go out and get anything, but I ended up finding this board. It was literally on the bottom of our board pile and my sweet husband pulled off all the boards so I could get to this bottom board. And of course it was big enough and it fit perfectly. So I had a board to use for this sign. So with this board, all I did, it was kind of beat up, but that was okay because I wanted it to look a little rustic. So I just sanded it down so there wasn't any like wood pieces sticking up off of this board. I wanted the appearance of a stained look, so I'm gonna use the Vintage Effects wash paint. All you have to do is brush it on and then just wipe it away. It works just like a stain, but it's a paint form, so it's not as messy and it's going to dry a lot quicker. I buy mine on Amazon. That's the only place I've been able to find it. I will definitely link it below for you. I will also link anything I'm wearing or any other products that I mentioned down below. Next, I'm gonna put my stencil on my board and I'm not going to center it because when I am going to display this, I want some florals and plants to be at the bottom. So I'm actually going to move it up a bit so that my words aren't gonna be covered by what I put at the bottom. So from there, I'm just gonna use one coat of Waverly and fill in this entire stencil. Now, once I remove the stencil, I sometimes like to go back in with a detail brush and fill in words. I didn't do that with the top words, but I felt like with the bottom words, they kind of got lost. So I just went in and filled it in. This is personal preference. I know some people have told me they like the look of the broken letters. I like it on the top with the font we have here, but with the cursive, I wanted it more filled in. From the wood pile that we pulled out, I found a couple pieces of trim and I just had my husband cut them down so that they would fit around my sign. Next, I just painted both sides of them with two coats of Waverly white chalk paint. And then to add them to my sign, I'm gonna use a combination of wood glue and hot glue. The hot glue is gonna hold it immediately in place and the wood glue is going to give a more secure bond. And I'm going to put them all around the edges of my sign. And would you guys believe that that scrap wood piece now is this beautiful sign that I can put out in my hallway. So for this next project, I found a table on Facebook Marketplace for $12. And I have had some people ask like how I'm doing, like Marketplace and all those different things. What I'm doing is I'm just paying them online via PayPal, or like sometimes I'll just leave cash at the front door and they leave the piece outside, I pick it up and we're not exchanging or anything. So that's how I've been doing Facebook Marketplace and then I usually let it sit in my garage for a few days before I mess with it. So with this $12 table, I didn't like the base of it. I wanted something that was more square and more streamlined. So I had my husband unscrew the base from the bottom of this piece. I had a piece of scrap wood in my garage and we just cut it down so it made a nice square that I could replace the piece that we took off. Next, we screwed in the board. And then I put the feet that were on it already back on with wood glue.
the top of this table had like a really cool pattern to it and I wanted to stay with that because I thought it was really cool. So I decided to paint a geometric pattern on the top of the table. So I'm just going to be following along with those lines on this table and it took me a while to put the painter's tape on there but if you just go slow, cut your tape as you go, I think you can do it and it looks nice. I also added tape along the edge. I'm gonna be painting it with two coats of a gray paint and I'll let that completely dry. After it dries, I'll come in and pull off that painter's tape. I don't let the painter's tape sit on for very long. As soon as it's dry, I go ahead and remove it. Now on the base, I wanted to wet distress a little bit, so that means I'm just going to take a wet rag and pull off the paint. And for $12, I have this really fun new table. Okay, you guys, I am dying to know which of these three projects was your favorite. I love all of them, so it's really hard for me to pick just one. Let me know in the comments. If you're new here, make sure that you subscribe. I post two DIYs each week. And if you missed our last DIY, I'll link it here for you, and I'll talk to you guys in our next one. Bye.